Five, ten, twenty. Yeah, we were about to play four and yeah. Yeah. which would have been cool. 65. Under the gun, Bruno makes it 65. This is his infamous hand, by the way. I think this is what he had last night, 6-7 of clubs. It was either 6-7 or 7-8 of clubs, one of the two, with his massive triple barrel bluff all in. Yes. It will go down in infamy, in Bruno's head, at least. 275. Oh, look it. He's going to get a chance to try and redeem. Oh, and then DQ sits down on his very first hand. He gets dealt queens and d elects to just flat. Which I have no problem with here because he doesn't know anything that's he knows going on at this table. Nothing about this table, and he gets queens right away in, in, in a three bet pot. But what do you do? I, I I think I would call two. Yeah, I have I don't have a problem with this. He has no clue what's going on here. He has position. He can expand the decision tree. Always a good thing to do when you got position. Expand the decision tree. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it's wonderful. You can look it up later. You, uh, maybe you call in a poker session and say, hey, what does expand the decision tree mean? No. Yes. No. You should. Somebody will, and they'll get all the knowledge. Three-way action. Well, Bruno here we go again. <laughs> yep, he's gotten himself in these kind of situations more than once. But they, they you all know, know. They all know that when. And, I mean, they don't know anything about DQ either, though. They they might. He might just be like the loosest guy in the world. But standard guy, cold calls two seventy five. He almost always has ace king or a big pair, maybe ace queen suited. The fact that he's now going to fire into two people just sort of like puts him solidly on something like tens or jacks. Exactly. That's a, usually the right the standard yep. three bet cold call tens, jacks, nines, eights. Yeah. Bruno, though, may, may not know anything about him and think this is a great semi-buff spot. Because if Bruno reads him as at all a spaz-type guy who just, just wants to see flops, this could be a good semi-buff spot. Well, the problem is this is a great raise spot for his hand, but if he's reading the guy like we are, which is yeah. that he exactly this kind of range, it's really tough to push a guy off this right. kind of range, at least on the flop. Right. He can try later, but I like this call here because a raise, you know, is not going to accomplish anything against that range. They're still going to call. Against that, yeah, if, if, if he's reading the situation correctly, then a call is fine. He is getting the implied odds that he wants. Neither of the cards that make his straight are going to scare a guy with tens or jacks or queens. They have a heart <laughs> now, DQ asks for a heart, which is very interesting. Hmm. And he, and he got it. one. <laughs> <laughs> which always is interesting when you get the card you asked for. Usually you end up betting it. Bruno's like, why couldn't it have been the four hearts? DQ has to bet here. I like that little bit of gamesmanship by DQ. It causes your opponents to have some doubt in their mind as to whether you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Which gets you calls. It does get you calls. I like to do little things like that and have people have some little doubt in their mind that I might be off my rocker. What? Yeah. No. That's what I do. I don't believe it. 700. <laughs> Bruno's thinking to himself now, like, well, is he... What's what's this bet sizing? What's going on here? And it's actually just like really, really great bet sizing here. It's the bet sizing of a guy who has ex basically <laughs> exactly what he has. He's got a lot of money behind though. DQ bought him for five thousand. Bruno's thinking, well, I st Bruno's gonna go for the delay check raise here. Yeah, and this is what I think. If if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it on the turn where it looks so much stronger. You have a better chance of getting the guy to fold. It's also much riskier because it's gonna cost a lot more if the guy calls. It's a weird play because I mean, it's like uh, if Bruno was slow playing a set. It's exactly what it looks like. In order to make this play, you have to have big balls or a big hand, and uh, Bruno happens to have both. Apparently, not in this specific spot. But. If I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, I basically have played my hand exactly like what I have. So the guy is either trying to make me lay this hand down or 
he was slow playing a set because he couldn't have made two pair here and he couldn't have made a straight here. So the only question in DQ's head is, is the guy slow playing a set? And he's decided, no, that's it, it's not making sense to him yet. And the guy calls and Bruno's got to get lucky. He's not believing the set story. And oh, and this is a really good card for, for DQ. If he thought by some weird chance Bruno had had some weird two pair hand, I don't know what it would be, five, nine, five, three, nine, three. But I mean, now he's got those, that stuff beat. <gasps> did he do it again? Yep. Bruno did it again. He did it again. This might be the exact he same call, He gets snap called. Oh, and Bruno, Bruno. blasts through his entire freaking stack again. Oh, oh my oh, God. Bruno, Bruno. He just doesn't ever back off. He's got more balls than brains. He's got more heart. But the kid just, oh, he just doesn't ever, ever, ever take a step backwards. It's like it, it, Doyle Brunson wrote about this in Super System, what, 50 years ago, that the thing that turned him into a great winning poker player was knowing when to put the brakes on. you got to have brakes. You can't just have accelerator. Why would Bruno decide to make this play against a guy that he's not played one hand with? He has no reason to believe that it's going to work. Do it against Q. Do it against Jerry. Do it against Andrew. Don't do it against some freaking rando who just cold called 275 and then cold call your turn and then calls your turn check raise i just don't know like the thought process that goes into deciding that this is the best possible scenario for five thousand dollars i mean yeah you got heart bruno you know how to play blah 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 but two nights in a row now you've basically lit a really great night on fire trying to run crazy bluffs, not against the type of player that you should be run crazy bluffs against. First was Israeli Ron, who ain't Skur, and then was just this guy DQ who shows up. What, what part of, what history do you have that this was the right time to just start shoveling chips into the pot? I don't get it. I don't get it.